guys. Guys, I brought out the whole fucking pot of coffee for you filthy goddamn animals. Let's get this party started. Turn the lights on. There we go. Guys, I got fantastic news. The Bidhead 1000 t-shirts are back in. We got new sizes, medium, double extra large. For you real men out there. Get your Bidhead 1000 t-shirt. I'm not taking this one off. This one smells like Andre the Giant singlet right now. Listen, when you get to my age, it's like your, your personal hygiene becomes like the bottom of the priority list. I remember when I was single, it was like a spritz of cologne every five minutes. I mean, I could rearrange my sock drawer and I would take a shower. It's like at any moment you could get laid. You could answer the door and get laid. When you're 40-something years old, and you got a wife and you got a kids. It's like, listen, I don't shave for days on end. I got toenails that are growing out. They're, they're like yellow. They're growing out around my toes, like a like one of those Corinthian war helmets. It looks like it looks like a big corn chip growing around my toes. They're like armor plated. I Sometimes I fart and the shit comes out and I sit down and then when I take off my underwear later it looks like I got a half exploded cigar hanging out of my ass. All right. What are we talking about here? All right. You know, and I get this comment from this guy the other day. Hold on, let me fix all three of my hairs. I get this comment from this guy the other day uh, on my last video. It's a misleading title. I'm like, yeah, guy, welcome to the internet. And uh, what did this guy just fly into planet Earth? And then he goes, and then he goes like this. He says, uh, "These videos are too long." It's like, what do you got? Like a like a real job or something, or or, or a life? Get off my fucking show! I don't got time for people like this. <sighs> All right, guys. Here we go. This morning, let's start by putting tape on the packages. All right. Wow. This is an exciting one. First, I left myself a little note here. Shout out to Russ at RK Games. RK Games, he has a gaming channel. He sent us a beautiful package last week and uh, I didn't happen to mention that he had a gaming channel. So if you could check out Russ at RK Games. Uh, wow, here's a, here's a package from all the way from Belgium. And what we did was we traded our Genesis Model 3. I sent it over to, to Belgium. And uh, I actually wound up fucking the guy because I put that the, the value of the package. I don't know why I did this. When I filled out the customs form, I put that the value of the package was like $40. $40. I don't know. I felt like... It, I had to write something. So I just wrote $40. And as it turns out, when I got to Belgium, he had to pay like this absorbent tax for it. I think he, he might have paid more, more, than, more than the actual American value for the game system. So I really fucked him tender. And I want to apologize for that. So here we go. This is coming all the way from Belgium. Did I already say that? Oh my God. You know, if nothing else, you guys can watch the show just to watch my dementia, uh, you know, grow at an exp exponential rate. All right. Here we go. What I, 
<laughs> what I know about Belgium, you can probably fit in a thimble. What do you guys do? Make beer over there? What else is going on? I don't know. Great people in Belgium. Probably got smoking hot chicks, too. this oh my god he told me he was going to send me some games that I guess you can only get in Europe so wow how incredible is this the <laughs> what do they call the smurfs over there this the shrump, the shrumps, the, I don't know, info games, wow, look at that, Jesus Christ, that might be the fucking coolest game in the whole collection right there, oh my god, the Smurfs, the Belgian version of the Smurfs, wow, that is so fucking cool, <laughs> I used, to, I used to watch the Smurfs religiously, by the way, every Saturday morning. Because that's important information, hey? But, uh, yeah, you know. Wow, look at this. Asterisks. Am I saying that right? Asterisk? Asterisk? How neat! How bizarre! I didn't even know these games existed. This is incredible. Wow. Oh, it's... Oh, it's Infograms. Infograms. This game pack cannot be used with Mattel or NES versions of Nintendo Entertainment System. Absolutely incredible. Damn, God damn it. He, he, he didn't send me a note, so I'm going to have to... Uh, what did he? All right. Here we go. It's from Tom. It's from Tom. Tom in Belgium. Wow, Tom. That is really neat. Thank you very much. Wow. That's the coolest thing ever. Okay. <sighs> Moving along. Alright, this next package is from... Ryan in Fargo, North Dakota. Wow. A lot of people don't know this. I've, I went to North Dakota. I took a, I took a cross-country trip with my buddy Eric... I took a month off from work. We packed up his 98 Nissan Altima. And we just headed across the top of the United States. And then we went down the coast. And we came back across the southern United States. Wow. What a trip. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I remember we stopped in, we stopped in Indiana. The Indiana had one huge fireworks warehouse after another when you're in New York you can't get your hands on fireworks you gotta have, you gotta know somebody at work who's got a list and you buy the fire and then he brings them in and sometimes you can't get them so I was like I told my buddy Eric I said yo pull the car over we gotta go check out this, this huge fireworks warehouse number one huge sign by the road no smoking obviously like before you even turn down the road to get there Walk into this warehouse, okay? We're talking about a warehouse the size of a, of a Walmart. And absolute, there was nobody in there. There was one, like, overweight lady sitting at the register reading the paper. And there was a couple in there. I'll never forget. I'll never forget this. It was a guy, filthy dirty t-shirt, work boots, filthy dirty blue jeans. His wife was in a bathrobe with slippers on. And they had a baby wearing nothing but a diaper sitting in the shopping cart. And the shopping cart was 
teeming with fireworks. And I'm looking, and I'm like, I thought I was in the Twilight Zone. I'm looking, and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, where are their priorities? I'm like, what are they going to do? Go home and blow off all these fireworks? I, they look like they didn't have much to celebrate. Anyhow, weird. They look like the people, remember the, the poltergeist when, uh, when they leave the house and they go to the hotel and they're all like just beat up looking and then they go in the hotel room and they throw the TV out the fucking door? So anyway, I'm walking around this place like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, I can buy this? I can buy this? I felt like asking the clerk. I can buy this? We wind up buying this. He, number one, we had no room in the fucking trunk. We had all our stuff packed in there. We're going on a month journey here. I wind up buying these huge assortments of fireworks. We go outside. We pop the trunk open. I was, we were like basically throwing stuff away just to make room to get these fireworks in. We put all the stuff in the back seat. I mean, you can barely see out the back window. We pack the trunk with fireworks. And I got news for you. We basically forgot about them. So, as we're driving, we get to Yosemite, uh, Yosemite, Yellowstone National Park. And I'm talking, we were doing like, sometimes 15 hours driving, you know, back and switching back and forth. And we were so exhausted, we pull into Yosemite again, Yellowstone National Park, and we're driving, 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 driving. Finally, we're so exhausted. I said, yo, Eric, come on. Let's pull this car over to the side of the road. We'll have a beer or something. So we pull over. It's pitch dark. Nothing but the stars outside. And we're having a beer on the side of the car. And I turn to Eric, and I'm like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And he's like, oh yeah. We pop the trunk open and we start setting off these fireworks. I, it couldn't have been a more beautiful scenario. We're blowing off these, these, it's, the sky is perfect for fireworks. We're blowing off like mortar shells. We got these huge like rockets. They're like three feet tall. We're launching them out of a beer bottle off the side of the car. They're like three stage rockets. They're going they're like stalling out and then going this way and then they're going that way. I mean, like these silver jet helicopters, they don't make silver jets anymore. Anyway, I could talk about silver jets all fucking day. But then again, then, uh, you know, it was like the Grucci brothers stopped by. Anyhow, long story short, we wind up st stopping at like this camping post. That's another story altogether. We get to this camping post, because out there you can camp anywhere. You don't need a permit. Here in Long Island, you need a permit. You gotta, you gotta hit, send in a sample of your hair so you can go camping somewhere. And you gotta cash in your 401k to get the fucking permit. Out, out west, you can camp anywhere. You pull over to the side of the road, pitch a tent, nobody bothers you. So, we wind up camping in this spot in Yellowstone Park. And we get in the tent, you know, we're drinking beers, we're eating potato chips, we're throwing the garbage outside the tent. Like, we're eating the chips, throw all the garbage outside the tent. Wake up in the morning, I swear to Christ, I open up the tent, about 20 yards in front of me, it was nighttime when we stopped, I couldn't see it. About 20 yards in front of me is a sign that says, you're in bear country. Make sure you tie up all your food and hang it from a tree, all this stuff, right? We had a pile of beer cans and potato chips outside this tent. I, I'm amazed we didn't get mauled. And when we saw that, it was like the Keystone Cops packing up the tent so we could get the fuck out of there. Anyhow. So then we're driving. It's daytime now. We're driving through Yellowstone Park. And we get to this, this point where all of a sudden, all the trees, they look like burnt matchsticks. And mile after mile after mile of burnt matchsticks. And... All of a sudden, these billboards would roll up, and it was Smokey the Bear. You know, only you can prevent forest fires. This is from the Great Far uh, Fire of, like, 1989 uh, or something like that. And it was like, no cigarettes, no smoking, none of this, none of that. I was like, oh, my God. If, if somebody would have caught us blowing off those fireworks, we'd still be in jail today.
And you don't you don't even want to know what happened in in North Dakota when we got to North. All right, I gotta tell. We're, we're talking about North Dakota. I gotta tell this one. When we went to North Dakota, we went to the Badlands. And the only way I can describe the Badlands to you is it's like it's like an episode of of a Roadrunner cartoon. You remember the Roadrunner? There was all these cliffs and valleys and 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 plateaus and whatnot, and they're, they're, you know, they're throwing rocks down on each other. And you say to yourself, what the, what kind of landscape is this? That's the Badlands! So when we got there, I was so blown away that you could actually, like, look over a cliff and it was like, you know, straight down, like a football field or two. So I say to my, I say, I say to my friend Eric, I say, pull over. I got this bright idea, like, take a picture of me, I'm going to pretend like I'm jumping off the cliff. So I get out of the car, I start running up to the, to the edge of the cliff there, and it, so for some reason in North Dakota they have mud. But they also, it's very, I don't know how to explain this, it's mud, but it's also very dry over there. So there's like a lot of dust blowing around. So right before the edge of the cliff was this like mud puddle, but it was, it had this sprinkling of dust on top, so it looked like dry ground. So I'm running up to the edge of the cliff, and I'd say about 10 feet before I hit the edge of the cliff, I go whoop on my back and start sliding in this mud towards the edge of the cliff. And when I tell you I came to a stop, my foot was hanging off the cliff. Listen, as God is my witness, I turn around, I look at Eric. I, my mouth was agape. I, 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 I was like, I turn around, I look at Eric. Eric's like this. So then I had to get up and I had to clean the mud off the outside of my, the outside of my pants and clean, clean the mud out of the inside of my pants as well. You gotta watch, listen. You gotta watch what you're doing when you go to other places, man. Don't fuck around. Do not fuck around. Mother Nature can deal you a serious hand. away from the Badlands. Badlands is, is like Disney World of North Dakota. We got, we got, a, we got a note here. Look at this guy. What are you doing? You, you laminated this note? Oh my god. What do we got here? Whoa, look at this. A PC engine button. A turbo graphics button. Button. Oh man! Hold on a second. Okay. Oh, whoa. Okay. Wow, they're magnets. Wow. Oh, these are going on the refrigerator. And if my wife lays a hand on them, I'm going to put a bat over her head. Weekend Rental Podcast. Full episodes available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. How about that, guys? Weekend Rental Podcast. Very cool. Check out Ryan over there. Hey, Jesse. It's been fun watching the NES collection grow. Hopefully these games get you a little closer to that full set. Tossed in a couple of magnets I think you'll enjoy. Feel free to check out my mediocre podcast, Weekend Rental. Ryan and his YouTube name is The Vidya Gamer. Vidya Gamer. V-I-D-J-A Gamer. Wow. All right. Oh boy, you want to see something heartbreaking? 
You ready for this, guys? It's worse than taking off a Band-Aid. All right, very cool. Copy of ice hockey. We talked about ice hockey last time. Still might be the greatest ice hockey game of all time. Isn't that amazing that you could say that about a game from Christ Almighty? This is this has got to be close to Nintendo's very shortly after launch, right? Ice hockey. Talk about a game that stands up to the test of time. Whew, here we go here. Black box game. Pinball. Pinball, look at that. It's back when Mario was moonlighting in other games. Oh, wow. Here's a game. Nintendo Shooter coming at you. Tiger Heli. Man, we got a lot of acclaimed games, huh? Tiger Heli. A decent shooter. It gets the job done. But this was a game released for the for the PC Engine as well. I don't think it was called Tiger Heli though. Solid shooter, acclaim. Remember the Bigfoot? I had listen. I was a huge Monster Truck fan. Monster Truck, mud bogging, tractor pulling. That was my thing growing up. We used to go to the Nassau Coliseum and you could watch tractor pulling. Oh, tractor pulling was the best. Uh, you, you're watching a truck pull an enormous weight that gets heavier and heavier until the fucking supercharger blows off the front of the engine. Oh, and, the, and listen, you're all rolling your eyes right now. Do not roll your... I gotta have coffee for this. Don't you dare roll your eyes until you've seen tractor pulling live. You never heard noise like that. You thought you saw monster trucks and they're loud? You know what killed tractor pulling, by the way? I remember seeing seven engines, seven alcohol-blown engines going down a 200-foot track at Nassau Coliseum. By the time the guy was done, everybody had respiratory cancer. All right, maybe not. The noise, forget a Motley Crue concert. Forget about it. The noise and the power it would hit you in your chest. And the seats that we always got were like the top row. And even still, what are you kidding me? Jet turbine tractor pulling? Sports. Sports. Who wants to play? Listen, this, the two greatest sports ever invented are bodybuilding and tractor pulling. You heard it here first. Who the hell wants to play a game against another man? I always thought that competition was so stupid. I don't want to compete against another person. What a waste of my time. Who's he? Some half-ass loser? I wanted to compete against myself. That's why I was always intrigued by lifting weights. It's like I'm challenging myself every time I lift a weight. Can I do it? It's against my, you know, I, I want to, you beat yourself. It's your hardest competitor. And tractor pulling? Oh, oh my god. The sheer, the raw power of it. Oh my god. My nuts are inflating right now just talking about it. I wish they were infl inflating. How did I know they're inflating? I can see my wife's purse getting bigger. No. All right. Well, what are we talking about? Oh, tractor pulling. You know why there's no more tractor pulling, by the way? I got news for you. Back in the 80s is when tractor pulling was big. You want to know why? Because they had these concerts, Farm Aid. Let me tell you something. Farmers had the whole the whole country tricked. We need money. We're starving to death. Ba ba ba. They had Farm Aid. Next thing you know, Billy Bob's got a tractor pulling uh, rig worth fucking five hundred thousand dollars. He's got fucking seven seven four fifty four alcohol blown supercharged fucking big block engines on a fucking tractor. You think he's having a hard time financially? I don't think so. Hey, uh, hey, Joe Bob, where'd you get the money for those fucking three jet engines on top of your fucking tractor pulling rig? Get the fuck out of here. Farm, farm aid. That's where all the money went. Throw a big concert for farmers so they can pull the wool over your eyes.
Did you ever see farming equipment? It's got to be the most expensive stuff on earth. You ever see a combine? What does it take to run that thing? Never mind the gas. Anyhow. Oh man, come on. I see this WrestleMania. I'm sorry. I don't Listen. I miss the Hulkster. Come on, guys. They made a new video game, a new wrestling video game for the PS4, right? And they didn't include the, the, the Hulk Hogan? Come on, man. If anybody should get a pass. Listen, we all make mistakes. God almighty. The real American. I feel like a piece of my childhood's been stripped away. The Hulkster, man. Take your vitamins. Man's a living legend. What he's been through is... Wife putting them through the ringer. Kids turning their back on them. Let's hear it for the Hulkster. I don't mind. Wow. Ryan, look what... <clears throat> Sorry. Look what Ryan did here. S&K, baseball stars... Is this the finest baseball game ever made for the NES? I don't know. Every time I say that, people come out of the woodwork. Dusty Diamonds. Dusty Diamonds. Here we go. But I guess this is more of a a realistic baseball. I, I don't know what I'm, I'm talking out of my ass right now. Let me stop. Holy Christ almighty. Look at this. Konami... Jack Nicholas Golf. How about that? You know, me and my buddy Phil, we went on a kick. Me and my buddy Rex, we, when it came to sports games, me and my buddy Rex, we went on a kick with tennis games. Me and my buddy Phil, we went on a kick with golf games. Not so much for the NES, but for the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo had a lot of great golf games. And we loved them all. And the Sega Genesis had Pebble Beach, had all the real, like, golf simulators. Uh, whereas Super Nintendo had more of the arcade style uh, golf games. We used to love them. That and pool games, believe it or not. We got into pool games for a while. Lunar, lunar Pool, I think it was, where you could adjust the uh, friction of the table. I still love to adjust the friction down to zero and just watch the balls fly all over the place for like hours on end. Wow. We got another game to add to our Blades of Steel necklace. I'm making a Blades of Steel necklace, by the way. And I'm going to wear it around like Flavor Flav. What are you going to do about it? You know, a lot of you guys like write some comments down there. You know, you got you got you got a big mouth. You know what you can do? You can suck it. Wow. A copy of Jaws. We already talked about Jaws. I already told you what a fantastic game it is. Go out and get yourself a copy of Jaws. Great movie too. I talk about the movie, but uh, my camera's going to run out of batteries. All right. And here we go. Uh, got a package from Don here from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. There we go. This one. This one from Don. I'm actually looking forward to the notes now. It, it'll, you know, at least it helps me hone my reading skills. Wow, okay, here we go. 
All right. Oh my God, I'm looking in this box. Here we go. Sip of coffee for Don because I see something very special in this box. Greetings from Dear Bithead 1000. Greetings from PA. You have a kick ass YouTube channel. I find it informative and entertaining. And your game room may be the best one on YouTube. Wow, how about that? Anyways, here are some games. I hope you don't have these titles, which I thought you didn't, at least from what I could see at the end of the, la the last video. There's a few black box games and some others. All right, he mentions a couple games. I don't want to say anything. Take care. I bought a shirt off eBay, and I'm the guy asking for an extra large when I ordered a large. Wow. Sorry to be a pain in the ass. The lodge really is fine. Well, we'll take care of that. Wow, here we go. You guys ready for this? Super Team Games. We have a copy of this. Uh, Mag Max. I believe we have a copy of this. Tecmo Bowl. I guess widely regarded as the best football game for the NES. I remember Tecmo Bowl was a real buzz back in the day. I remember kids talking about it in school and whatnot. I remember playing it briefly. My buddy Rex liked playing it, but, you know... It's not something that we were playing like during a sleepover or something like that. But I remember catching him playing uh, Tecmo Bowl. And if I'm not mistaken, they had the players' names in this. Did it have the uh, National Football League players? Yeah. Wow, so that was pretty amazing feat for back in the day, I guess. I don't know. Now it is. I don't know how it was back in the day. Tecmo Bowl. Wow. <laughs> Don, I mean, you, not your fault. A lot of doubles here. Uh, Wizards and Warriors. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind, but if I, if I get doubles, I intend to, uh, to trade them. I'm not going to sell them. I, somebody was asking me if I was selling doubles. I'm not selling doubles, but I, I will trade. So... You know, I don't want to take anybody's money or whatnot for stuff that I'm, I'm basically getting gifted to me. Uh, wow, Wizards and Warriors. Whew. I'd love to do a playthrough of this game one day, guys. It'd be a long playthrough. Uh, here we go, Gyromite. We got a copy of Gyromite. Talked about this on the last video. And Hogan's Alley. See, this is where we're running into uh, some tricky waters here because we're starting to get into a uh, double zone. I knew this was going to happen sooner or later. I didn't, just didn't realize it was going to happen this soon. Okay. And here we go. Oh, wow. Ten-yard fight. I remember playing 10 yard fight and trying to get into it like you know this was the Nintendo I remember before this probably the only football game I ever played was uh, on the ColecoVision what was the name of it you had to use a special joystick for it I believe I borrowed it from my next door neighbor It had a special joystick for, uh, oh, it had this incredible joystick. What was the name of the game? I, I can't remember right now. Oh, my God. I would knock on this guy's door. I was that annoying kid where he was like, if I was, say, 11, he was in his 20s, and I would go over there, and he had a, he had a uh, special entrance to his, uh, he had like an apartment in his house. 
It was like the coolest thing ever. You go in there, there was like pictures of naked girls everywhere from like Playboy magazine. He had a slot machine. He had backstage passes to every every band you could ever imagine, like hanging up on the wall. Just like music, things ever, guitars. Like the coolest guy alive. Guy used to skateboard like Rodney Mullen. I, j I shit you not. That was like the style of skateboarding back in the day, back in the 80s. It was freestyle skateboarding. That's where I got my first skateboard. I got a freestyle skateboard where everybody else was starting to go to the wide boards. I had a freestyle skateboard. I thought I was the coolest kid on the block. But this guy used to be able to do like, I don't know, like spin on the skateboard like a ballerina. He'd do it on the side of his house. I'd just sit there like, whoa. And it was like nobody else could do that. Everybody else was like street skating, trying to go over ramps and stuff. This guy was doing these incredible, uh, what, what, what was it called when you, when you would uh, stand on the end of the board and tip it up and like go down the road? Uh, uh, I'm fucking getting old. A ver not a very... You do like an endo and balance yourself? Nobody was doing that. That was back when people used to go in and out of cones, like doing the slalom. Remember back in those days, you just you go down a hill and you'd go in between the cones with the, the skateboard. Oh my God! You try doing that t today, the f your friends would probably hit you over the head with their skateboards. They'd have the '80s shorts on that were like creeping up your ass, and you go down and do the slalom on the skinny board. Come on now, that's skateboarding, buddy. And wow, here's a classic right here: Excite Bike. Spent many, many days over my friend Billy's house while he was he was cooking up his pot, playing Excite Bike, overheating the engine. I'm saving this one for last. Wow, here we go. Uh, Friday the thirteenth. I really like this game. This game gets bashed to pieces. I don't really know why. I like the mood. I like the atmosphere. And the idea that you were going to, like, happen upon Jason. Huh. You had to be there, guys. You had to be there. This was almost like running into Jaws, the embossed Jaws. Finding Jason was like, oh, it's petrifying. And you walk into that room and you see those children in the corner. It's like, what the fuck is happening here? What is Jason doing to these kids? They're all sitting there in a line? My God. And guys, wow, what a way to finish your video. Here we go. One of my top five, top five greatest Nintendo games of all time. Early release for the for the for the NES. Here we go. It's Rygar, and it's the very first video game I ever beat. And what an experience! I it was my first time playing a game where you could get experience. Because you could do that in Rygar. It took me so long to figure that out. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, and your hit points would go up and whatnot. It, like, what does all that mean? You, you you would press and there would be a menu and you would see, like, I believe it was experience, hit points, and uh, magic. And I didn't know what it meant. And I beat the game. I still didn't know what it meant. And this is coming off of the ColecoVision and the Atari where games wouldn't end. You play the Smurfs and you, you would constantly loop, 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 loop. You couldn't beat it. You would play games, even like Commando for the NES. It would loop, 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 loop. But this game had an ending. And that final boss, it took me so long to defeat that final boss. Oh my god, talk about a challenging game, man. I broke my ass trying to beat this game. But I beat it. And what a sensational feeling. I would call this an action RPG. How about that? Oh, Rygar holds up today. I don't care what you say.
But man, one hit death and you're out. That's it. No guys, one hit death and you're out. No, wait a second. It's not a one hit death. It's not a one hit. When you die, you have one guy. When he's dead, gone. Start the game over. Good luck. And I tell this story all the time, but fuck it. We're here talking about Rygar. What I used to do before school, I would park Rygar. Is that his name? I would park Rygar back against the rock. I would take my NES Advantage controller. I would wrap electrical tape around the, the joystick so he was ducking. And then I'd ball up a piece of toilet paper and put it on the B button and tape the B button down with turbo on. So he's constantly slinging that saw blade yo-yo. And those fucking centipedes would, I'd go where their, their, their respawn area was and just and gingerly shut the TV off, go to school, and when I would come home, full experience. Couldn't find that in Nintendo Power. Please, I'm lucky my house didn't burn down. Don, Don, you hit it out of the park. You hit it right out of the fucking park. Rygar. Oh, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this since 2011. I've never found Rygar. Okay, guys, when I did my first sell-off, it was like two years, a year and a half into the show, I had over 260 individual NES games, not doubles. And I didn't have Rygar. And I didn't have Final Fantasy. And I'd stuck in my craw. I still haven't been able to find Rygar. Here we go. Classic. Sip of coffee. Guys. Get yourself a Bithead 1000 t-shirt. Everybody needs one, especially in November. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Wow. What a what a nice round number. Thank you guys. I, I don't know if you guys understand how grateful I am for for this. I you know, I understand uh I understand. I don't know what I'm fucking saying right now. Uh, I am very, very grateful for this. And I understand it's cheating. I know a lot of guys out there saying this, this is cheating or whatnot. But, you know, whenever I get the opportunity to get games in here so I can turn on the camera and hang out with you guys, I'm going to take it. Okay? Because I think that's, that's the most important thing that we get to hang out. It's really, you know, I got no friends. So, you know, you guys are my friends. It's true. <laughs> At least I don't have friends that I see anymore. Have a wife and a kids and get back to me. You'll understand why. Anyhow, let's get these in the game cabinet.
this thing might be getting too heavy. I need some oil. Anybody have a tin man they want to resuscitate?